What is up guys, Speed here, and today we are back with another video, and we're going to be going over the best heroes of 7.22D. The new patch recently came out, a couple of major changes, a couple of small changes, just a, a mixed batch of goodies, but I think over the last few changes from 7.22B to 7.22C to all the way up to 7.22D, a few heroes have risen, and some under the radar, so we're going to be going over a few heroes you should definitely be considering or trying in your pubs. So first off on the list is Klinks. Now I think a lot of people have seen Klinks coming for a while now. I do think he's very good. I think he's extremely good for pubs. He has a very dominant laning stage and one of the hardest level 6 spikes in the game. There's almost no heroes that can lane against the level 6 Klinks. And with his new talents and constant buffs to his strength, he's actually getting more and more tanky. Right, he still can get bursted by a lot of magical damage, but the sheer amount of damage output from Strafe, his ultimate, and especially Medallion plus Ags is absolutely insane. The Clink's Ags is just a perfect item build up. It gives you a nice bit of mana pool, which you kind of lacked in the past. It gives you quite a bit of damage, right? And it gives him some tankiness. It's really what Clink's needed. And I think if you haven't played Clink's mid or Clink's safe lane, give it a go. It's quite easy. Basically, just throw your ult down, build up to an Ags, and then come out of Invis and you have two skeletons to shred people apart. Second up, on the list is also another hero that I don't think is under the radar, which is Windranger. This hero is now being picked by Weeha quite a bit. I think Liquid is showing a lot of prowess within this hero and showing what it actually can do, which is have a really solid landing stage and then, similar to Kling's, hit one of the most obnoxious level 6 spikes. A Windranger with level 6 has kill potential on almost every single hero in the game, especially if she hits her javelin timing. Windranger with javelin is just... It's frustrating because you can't run away from her. She has wind run to catch up. She has shackle shot to close the distance. Power shot if you get away. Her ultimate does not make her stop anymore. It's like the ultimate ability. She's the ultimate hero for chasing you down. Really, I think her build is straightforward too. In the past, Wind Ranger's item build was kind of... It was weird. It was weird. You'd sometimes have to buy an Axe. You'd sometimes have to buy a Maelstrom, an MKB, a Blink. Now, I think Weeha has shown us a great build, which is the Javelin into BKB. Right, you can also go MKB into BKB if you're having a really, really good game. But this build, with now the way that her ultimate works, which is it scales down and cooldown from 70 to 50 to 30, allows you to stay on the map and gain all that Wind Ranger needs, which is magical immunity. A Wind Ranger with magical immunity is a Wind Ranger that's going to carry the game, hands down. Next up is Visage. This hero's win rate has gone up quite a bit since the last patch. If you aren't familiar with what happened last patch, he got 10 more damage on his soul assumption, which is not huge, but considering it is a charge based ability, that means if you have four charges, it's 40 more damage, which is solid. It's solid. Also, I think the hero has just been ignored for too long. It definitely has its niche situations. The familiars are still quite powerful with a medallion. And yeah, I think it's a solid mid laner that has been untouched for a while and maybe not for great reasons. So if you're a Visage player, check it out. You can even check out Weeha's recent performance in the Epicenter Major. Really cool to be seeing the hero played again. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, they picked it with the Beastmaster, which I think is a absolutely fantastic combo with Visage. So if you can pick it with any sort of like attack speed buff like Beastmaster or any stuns, even a hero like AA. AA plus Visage can burst any hero in the early game. Um, there's a lot of synergy. I think a lot of cool matchups that you could try out and yeah, give him a go. Next up is my personal favorite that I'm definitely going to experiment with in 7.22D, which is Enchantress. I'm personally a huge fan of Enchantress support, but in particular, I think Enchantress offlane is underrated. It's very easy to use, right? You have quite a bit of armor now. You just got another armor in the last patch. Your movement speed isn't exactly what it used to be, but it's still generally high. And in patch 7.22C, you received two more buffs. Enchant is now an eight second cooldown at max. Eight, guys. Eight. That is so low. Enchant is one of the best abilities in the game, in my opinion. It's a purge. It's a 55% slow. 55% for six seconds on an eight second cooldown. That is insane. Also, the creeps last 80 seconds, meaning you could have, I guess, technically up to 10 creeps if you want to keep it going in that regard. That is crazy. I think Enchantress has a lot of untapped potential. Give this hero a go. Buy treads, buy stats, buy a dragon lance, and just shred people. This is untapped potential for sure, and I think it's a fantastic pub hero if you learn how to stomp the laning stage. Next up is Ancient Apparition. Now, once again, kind of back to the clinks and win route. I don't think AA is an untouched hero, but if you haven't seen AA played recently, he's been getting picked quite a bit in the Epicenter Major, the, the previous one, and 
for good reason, right? The hero's landing stage with an extra stun, landing with a hero like Sven or Sand King, has a lot of prowess, right? The ability to line up a cold feed is fantastic. It's a high damage ability that has a very long stun if you can pull it off. So first off, if you're going to pick AA, try to pick it with a laner such as Wraith King, Sven, um, Sand King, as I said. Anything really with the setup stun or setup slow is really good for AA. Also, I think AA, is, he's received so many buffs to his ultimate that this ability is just really good now. I mean, it takes really long. It's only a 40 second cooldown, which it's been forever. But I mean, um, if we just simply look at the numbers, it's a 10% threshold at level one, which is crazy considering it does 12.5 damage per second and 250 damage uh, at level six. And level six is easier than ever to get, right? I want to point this out to you all, you guys. If you are familiar with the recent, I believe, 7.22 B patch or the original 7.22, level six is significantly easier to get, right? It's less XP and you get more XP in the early game. As well, there's two tomes, meaning as to pause five, you'll almost always get one, right? An early six spike for a hero like AA is massive, right? He's one of the hardest level six spikes in Dota. He's up there with a hero like Rubik, right? Like uh, these heroes together in a game can do so much damage at level six. And with the tome and the XP changes to six, I think really enabled AA to become a lot better of a hero. And lastly, I want to mention, I think Ice Vortex is one of the best abilities in the game. It's a 30% slow on a four second cooldown. It amps magical damage by 30%. 30%. If you have a veil on top of that, that's around a 55% amp. That is insane. 55%. Not only that, you can also use it as a defensive tool. If you put it on, on top of yourself, you move faster. This spell is so versatile. Your ultimate is so deadly. And I think Cold Feet is really, really good for the laning stage if you can set it up. It's only a 10 second cooldown and stuns for two seconds. Next up is Night Stalker. Night Stalker, according to Dota buff, has gone up 3% uh, in the recent times. And I don't think this is for no reason. Right, I really think this hero is extremely good in pubs, and let me explain why. So what I've noticed when watching a lot of pubs recently, specifically uh, like the mid-tier brackets, people don't get pressured hard in the landing stage. Night Stalker's main weakness is the fact that he's basically a glorified melee creep in the landing stage. That is it. His spells do nothing, and he just right clicks. He has no way to close the gap. He has no way to put pressure. The only thing he has is like a slightly high base damage and decent base HP regen. Right, so he's a weak landing stage, but in these pubs, I don't believe people get punished in the laning stage nearly as hard as they should. If you can solo the lane, you're going to hit level 6 by the 10 minute mark guaranteed even earlier, even earlier if you're soloing, because people always push the lane. I assure you, watch your replay, look at the off lane, and notice how many times the wave is just shoved in and in and in, and how much opportunity there is to get XP. And a hero like Night Stalker, all you need is XP, all you need is that one item. If you have your phase boots, or just even a boots and orb of venom, you can crush people in the nighttime. I want to make it clear that Dark Ascension at level 1 gives you 50 bonus damage. 50. It is 140 second cooldown, but it lasts for 30 seconds and gives you vision all around you as well as allows you to fly over anything. That is so powerful. If you have any sort of attack speed, which I talked about his talents in a previous video, but his talents are fantastic for this. I mean, really, this hero is fantastic in general. But the attack speed with Hunter in the Night in coordination with this 50 damage means you pump out damage. It's as simple as that. Pick up a medallion, a wand, phase boots, some early stat items, and you're going to run over the early game fights with ease. Next up is Omni Knight. So I think Omni Knight is just a good hero. I think some teams are realizing this. Team Virtus Pro recently picked it in the Epicenter Major. I believe there's other teams that even picked it as an offlaner. It's seeing play. But what's cool about Omni Knight is it can be played both as a position 5 or a position 3. I think it has a lot of prowess as a Radiance Carrier. Heavenly Grace is like, I mean... It's just insane, straight up insane for keeping you alive. With your ultimate, Degenora and Purification, you can't die. If you have a Radiance, I mean, you just do so much damage. You can run in with 50% status resistance, with 20 HP regen, 8 more bonus strength, as well as a 300 heal, a 34% slow. People can't disengage, you take them down, you have a strong laning stage, so I think you're a, a very strong core. But also, the crazy thing about Heavenly Grace for a support Omni Knight, it's not only that it is one of the best sustaining spells in the laning stage, as it lasts for 12 seconds with 8 HP regen, quite good, quite good, as well as gives some strength, quite good. But also, it's a hard dispel, hard, meaning, strong, I should say, it's a strong dispel, meaning it gets rid of stuns. You can purge things like Flaming Lasso, you can purge things like Fiend's Grip, you can purge things like Ravage, you can purge these things. It is that good. This spell is heavily underrated and should be what you are maxing. So if you haven't played Omni Knight as a 5, 
as a three. I really recommend it. Max out your heavenly grace and then max out your purification and you're going to notice how tanky and devastating this hero actually can be. And finally, the last hero on the list is Wraith King. Now, I've made other videos on Wraith King, right? I think some pro teams have picked Wraith King. This hero is seeing a lot more play. I believe TNC loves Wraith King for Gabby, and I really recommend you try Wraith King out as well. It's simple. I'm not going to go over it. In fact, there is another Wraith King video on this channel, as I said. Go check that out if you're interested in Wraith King. Basically, your skeletons are one of the best farming abilities in the game. You have a decent landing stage, pair them with a hero like AA, and you have a lot of kill threat. In fact, I think that combo's fantastic, by the way. You have a lot of kill threat, not only in the landing stage, but also in the mid to late game, which is great, right? A stun into the AA ult is fantastic, as well as the magical amp with a Wraith King Radiance. It has a lot of synergy, so give that a go. But basically, you want to use your skeletons to split push, and you farm faster than most heroes in Dota. Not only that, I mean, your playstyle is easy. You just build skeletons, you cast skeletons, you buy Radiance, you walk into the fight, and you stun people. If you can't do that, I don't know what you can do. You should probably just quit Dota. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do like and subscribe. And of course, leave it comment down below which hero out of this list you think is the best. I personally think, as I said, that Enchantress is one of the most underrated heroes in Dota right now. She's been getting consistently buffed, and at TI8 was like the hero. So, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I really think that's the hero. Let me know if you think I'm wrong, if you think Clinks, Wind, Visage, AA, Night Sucker, Omni, or Wraith King tops her, and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, before I leave you, I just want to remind you that over at GameLeap.com, you can check out guides just like this one, made by top tier pros. It will help you gain MMR faster, it will help you learn the game much more in depth, and overall, just increase the experience of your Dota gameplay as you will crush your opponents simply by knowing more than them.